So I was going to do a thing with uh, forced perspective and stuff, but I just don't have the time or anything that's like this big or this big to do it with. So, yeah. These are small, but the ones out there are far away. Hey guys, how you doing? My name is Codename Big Bear or Stuart, if you want to call me by my first name. Uh, so today we're going to have a relatively short video talking about a, an interesting puzzle game. Before we continue guys, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, do all of that that really helps us out. We got tons of videos on our YouTube, we have a website, that's, all the links are below of course. Um, you know, it, it really does help us, as I said, on our series every single week. Uh, but if you've watched more than one of our videos and respawning in total this week, Click the subscribe, click the notification, you'll see more of us as well. Uh, but otherwise, back to usual programming, eh? Ooh. Yeah, the game is called Super Liminal. Um, it's a, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a weird one. Super Liminal, in case you don't know, uh, basically means you are able to have really lucid dreams. It's essentially that point where you're in your dream, you're going to be super lucid, and you can control things. You have a, a consciousness within subconscious, I suppose. Um, it's a really interesting game. Uh, to look at it, you might think this is a potentially a Portal clone, uh, but it's not. Not really. Uh, it's actually quite different. I, I like to compare it to Portal myself because uh, it's very simple and has that kind of feel to it. Uh, with the clips I'll be showing, obviously, you hopefully will be able to get to see what I mean. But whereas with Portal, you have your tool that's on the screen and you can shoot, uh, you can shoot a Portal on one wall and then out of another one, you appear. Uh, this is actually all about using objects uh, within your perception. So, for instance, if you have a chess piece that is quite far away and you pick it up, uh, it's going to be as small as it is that you pick it up with. So, I pick up this skull here, for instance, and I place it there, it's bigger to me. I place it there, it's bigger to you. But then I let go of that with the first person view and it stays that big for the character, for you within game. Uh, but then uh, I get closer to it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and you get the idea. You can change its size by mucking about with where you put it. Hopefully the uh, clips will actually explain that a bit better. <laughs> um, this is an interesting game because this is exactly the, my kind of thing. Uh, I love puzzle games like this. I love short and sweet games as well. Uh, and this one I... It, it didn't really challenge me, but it did challenge me enough to make me go, that's really cool. I really enjoyed being able to pop things into existence. Well, just, just by sheerly, what, sheerly, sheerly? Really? Can't speak today, apparently. Uh, but just by uh, by perceiving it to be in in uh, in existence. Uh, for instance, you see a line on a wall and you try and match that line up. Eventually, you can line up an entire table with flowers attached and it literally pops into existence, which is really cool. Now, the look at this game graphically is, well, it, it's clearly in the, in the developers, it's not exactly ugly, but it's not exactly the prettiest of games. It has that kind of, uh, uh, kind of sheen that goes over everything, it kind of makes everything look a little bit cheaper. Um, there's nothing against the game at all, because like I say, the mechanics of it, I really enjoyed it. just absolutely wins this game for me. Uh, but the, the way it looks is a bit off uh, for me. Uh, you are supposed to be in a dream, and you are trying to escape this dream. You're having voiceovers tell you this the entire time you're going through it as well. And I suppose that sheen kind of adds to that, makes it look unreal. Uh, but you're going through these rooms, and you kind of start off in like a hotel, and you've got to go for the exit. So you start off in a hotel, you start off in a room, and then you eventually kind of just end up in a hotel of sorts. And uh, you've got to figure things out as you go. So, you know, you're stuck in one room. Well, how the heck am I going to get out of this one? You look around, you can find something. Your little hand appears on the screen. Oh, I can grab that. So you grab that, then you figure out what you do with that, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the whole story of the game is, as I've been saying, as I've said about three times in this last sentence, or last paragraph or so, is that you are in a dream. And the entire time you're going through this game, you do have somebody... Uh, uh, commentating uh, over everything you're doing. Again, similar to uh, similar to Portal with GLaDOS and what she does. She, instead of this voice teasing you the entire way through, it's basically say, it's kind of giving you an, an idea of what's actually going on uh, in the conscious mind uh, of your character. Hello, 
My name is Dr. Glenn Pierce, and I'm just popping in to give you a quick update on where you are. We still don't know, but please keep moving forward, and hopefully you prefer frequent updates to being reminded that you are completely lost. Uh, because I'm assuming you're in some sort of coma that's been induced because of uh, government regulations, because it sounds like this is your required sleep time, and if you don't follow the instructions you're going to incept yourself and you're going to be uh, into all sorts of other dreams as you go it is all kind of weird in fact actually as you go a level uh, down a level and down another level as you, you kind of restart the game again um you end up kind of becoming across kind of nightmarish slight things so there's lots of blood or handprints bloody handprints on the wall everywhere you go um <clears throat> which was nice i wasn't expecting it there was actually one point that did genuinely make me jump. I, I, don't know, I wasn't expecting that at all. I was expecting just a straightforward puzzle game. But uh, again, similar thing to uh, Portal in that sense. You're going through these rooms and you see cracks in the walls and you're able to look and explore and do extra things. At one point, I think I've captured it. I've tried and climb over a, over a warehouse to get to an area I was a little bit stuck on. And it turns out that I essentially broke the game. Um, I didn't, I didn't break the game, it was running fine, but I got invisible walled and I wasn't able to do what I thought I could do, but I did that by changing a giant, I want to say bishop piece? I'm going to stick with bishop piece and kind of like plunk that on a block so it just fell over so I can just climb up on it. Um, I'm not supposed to do that I think in game, but it was interesting and fun to do. Uh, now this is on a PC, uh, I don't know if it's on any, any main consoles, if it is. It'll be on the screen as always. Um, but I played this on the PC and I, I really enjoyed it. But uh, for me, uh, I really struggle with the mouse and keyboard controls. I just kept missing the buttons and I kept not knowing what the heck I was supposed to press. The mouse thing was fine. Um, and obviously that's that's down to preference there. But So I'm not going to take that from this game at all in any way. I think it's controls and the way, way you use controls majority of people are going to really get a kick out of it and enjoy it. Uh, for me, I'm a console gamer more often than not, uh, so not having uh, something in my hand that is obvious that goes forwards, you know, and this left and right, it's one of those. Now, I did say this is going to be a short video. There isn't really much else I can talk about this game other than the fact that I really thoroughly enjoyed myself. I'm fully intrigued. I'm, I feel I'm very close to the end of the game, and, um, and I'm really hoping that the story develops the way it does. Uh, I will keep you informed in another video in the future. Um, but, <clears throat> uh, you know, graphically, not incredible, uh, but not bad at all. As I said, you know, it's kind of uh, above average. Just put it that. It's above average. But that's not what this game is about. It's about the puzzles, about me the mechanics, popping things into existence, all about perception. Perception is reality. This is something that is said throughout this entire game, uh, written in notes everywhere to make sure that you understand what you've got to do next. For instance, you've got a door. I've done it for instance, what am I talking about? Perception is reality. That's uh, that's the main crux of this game. Uh, without uh, forcing perception to uh, have things pop into place, you're not going to progress through this game. If you don't get your head around that, it's going to be quite difficult. I did find myself at uh, points uh, picking up pieces and dropping them far away in, in, the, in the room, going up to make them bigger, and then messing up when I went near a wall and made it really small on myself. But yeah, there's a few things you can do, a few things you can muck about with. It's just getting used to the idea of the mechanic itself. Now on that, uh, like I say, I love games like this. I love, love uh, puzzle games like this. Um, you know, simple puzzles that get you things or, or a, a puzzle that just completely stumps you. I did get stuck at one point. I'm not going to spoil that. I'm not going to put that bit in the video. Um, but I did get really, really stuck at one point and it was just simply a case of, I didn't look everywhere in every angle I possibly could to figure out what the heck I could do. Um, so that was my own fault. Now, uh, obviously, you hear me talk, you, you can tell that I, I really enjoyed this game. I, I had great fun playing this. Um, I, I don't, I'm unsure about the replayability of this game. Uh, I had to complete the game once to see if anything else new unlocks. Uh, again, I will keep you posted. Um, but if it doesn't, it, you know, it's going to be kind of one of the same trappings that Portal did. At least for me, I'm not a huge fan of Portal after one playthrough. I enjoy Portal. I really enjoy Portal. 
Uh, I enjoyed Portal 2 and I enjoyed the multiplayer of it. But once I went through it again, I found it far too easy. The jokes didn't land as well. Um, so I'm worried that Superliminal will do the same when it comes to replayability. Uh, I'm hoping that when you go back in, you're a different subject. You've got different puzzles to deal with. You know, it's like another whole new game for you. Um, but I, I'm not holding out hope on that one. Um, but anyway, so the score for this game... Um, yeah, it's been out for a little while now. Uh, I got it on the Epic uh, Game Store. And, uh, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, we got given at respawning. So it's keeping us entertained. And thank you very much again to the developers that gave us this code. Uh, but the game itself, I, I, I do feel that I'm very positive when it comes to games. There's not many games I've given anything less than an 8. And I'm, I'm, I am going to give this uh, a 7. But again, it could be up to an 8. Uh, the reason I, I'm so positive is because I just enjoy things. I, I, I just enjoy bad things, and I, I like to see the positive in the, in the thing that is bad. You know, to give you a good example, Alone in the Dark 2008, I, I genuinely really, really love that game. Like, really love that game. Um, you know, it's, uh, I just, you know, I, I can't help it. So I decided to be a bit more critical, and just, the, just a few little tweaks here and there. Um, would make this a much better game again as a presentation, but for the sheer mechanics of the game and how well it runs. Uh, oh, no, actually. Hoo -hoo -hoo, we're going to go back where. So the game itself, um, was playing it, it, it was pretty much flawless throughout, although I did have a few issues with uh, stammering. I say pretty much flawless. There's not really flawless if, it's, if it stops and starts and you know, it gets all glitchy and stuff. And what I mean by that is it just slowed down or completely paused uh, on me when whilst I was playing this game. Um, I'm pretty sure that has more to do with my computer than it does the actual game. Um, so I'm just going to assume on everyone else's uh, PCs it's just going to run flawlessly and fine because my PC is six years old and it's never been like upgraded in any way uh so i'm gonna just leave it at that uh but again the, the game itself is gonna get a, a, a above average score it's gonna get a seven out of ten which is a good score as far as i'm concerned that is a good game the mechanics of this game really really saves it. i'm quite intrigued as i said to what's actually happening in this universe and i said i'm very very close to the end and i really hope that the whole inception type thing that's going on within this game really comes to you know it started to go on spooky things i really hope it gets creepier as it goes as well uh so yeah very very excited for this game and very excited to uh continue playing it once i finish making this little bit of video um but guys uh, i would fully recommend playing this game uh super liminal if you enjoy a puzzle game uh in the vein of portal give this a go 100% give this a go. If you don't really enjoy those kind of games, then, well, don't. You know, it's up to you at the end of the day. Um, but anyway, guys, that's the end of my video. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, um, you know, as always, uh, like, share, subscribe, uh, comment below, all that kind of thing. We got 450 plus videos on our on our website right now, on our YouTube channel right now. Uh, but don't forget to check out the website as always. Uh, but guys, have yourself a really nice day. Thank you very much for enjoying this and watching my show and listening to me ramble on about a game you, you might not even care about. Uh, but thank you very much. Be nice to each other, yeah?